We out here in Tulsa. We just pulled up to Tulsa. We about to show some love throughout the city. I was riding. He was doing the direction. All right. All right. <laughs> doing all the traffic. But look, we made it, y'all. We made it to Greenwood, the Black Wall Street, the home of the original Black Wall Street. Yes. And what's so crazy is the reason why Megan O, that's why I'm here, along with you, is the fact that it's crazy to know that I found out about Greenwood District, like, literally in my 20s. And to learn about all of the black excellence that went down right here, black wealth that was created right here, and to see how in the glimpse of an eye, because of the story that was untold of what really happened here in Greenwood to cause this massacre that knocked down Black Wall Street. So, Steph, that's why we're here, doing what we're doing, because it, it's just, it's just connect. major shock. We're here to connect with the ancestors, man. We want to connect with our people, and we want to bring you guys along on that journey. So that's what we're doing. We're coming out here to show our respects to our ancestors as well as bring you guys along with us. So while we growing, we want y'all to grow with us. You feel me? So will you come with us? Let's go. You are in Reconciliation Park, John Hope Franklin Reconciliation Park. This park is... Um, included with the International Coalition Sites of Conscience because we are intentionally, right, we're intentionally unraveling this history. And we're doing that with a dignity, a dignity and respect to the people that it happened to. Those people that it happened to just happen to be people of African ancestry, Native ancestry, and European ancestry. So these parks and these spaces are created around the globe to speak to the trauma and the violence, but then also to the magnificence of those people's lives. The artwork that you see here in a sculptural representation is done by Ed White. Ed White was the first African-American test pilot named and called to the NASA program to become the first African-American astronaut wow. by President John F. Kennedy in 1961. Wow. Right? But because NASA was created in Mobile, Alabama, and racism does exist in the United States of America, he was denied access into the NASA program to complete everything to become and be named an astronaut when all those other men were lined up on the directions to be named. Ed White was denied that. Simply because he was African American. Wow. He had two engineering degrees, passed all of the tests, and was perfect size and weight to be a pilot, right? But because of racism in America, he's denied. Yeah. So he goes back to Denver, Colorado, and he learns about African American history and culture for the first time as a grown man, 40 years old. And he gets his MFA in sculpting, and he creates works of art that speaks to the dignity of the contribution that African-American people have made, despite those things that have happened to them. This park is named after the historian, Dr. John Hope Franklin, who grew up here in Tulsa after the massacre. But his father, B.C. Franklin, was an attorney, was here in Tulsa when the massacre happened. He was one of those stately men that as you walked in, you saw a fair around that loud body of water, a statue with his hands up, on top of humiliation. That's how the men were walked through the community when the white men came across the tracks to attack this community. You see the man on top of hostility up there? Mm -hmm. That's a white man with guns on his body mm -hmm. because they took away the black man's guns and then they walked them through the streets in front of their families, in front of their women, in front of their children. A very stately men and intern them at three locations here in Tulsa. When you come around here to Hope and you see that man there standing with a baby and he looks like he has a smile on his face. Well, we know all three of those images actually exist because that statuary was made from black and white photos from 1921. We just don't know the names of those two men on top of humiliation and hope. I mean, uh, hostility, but the man on Hope, he's the Red Cross the director, Mr. Maurice Willows. And a baby was born, African-American, June the 2nd or 3rd. And he's holding that baby, right? And he's standing on top of Hope. 
Not because he's a savior, because he's not. He's working for the Red Cross. That's what they do for everybody. And they still do that today. But because we're all born after 1921, right? And so we're here. So what that means is that we survive. Like we survive over and over and over again. This tower starts on the continent of Africa. You see an intact village on this tower, right? And as you go around this tower, you see these African people encounter sails from a slave ship and bondage happens. And then who do they encounter? Bondage also happened in the southeast portion of the United States with some of the tribes there. My tribe in, in particular, the Muscogee people. Those people, when they were marched out of the southeast, they took their slaves with them of African descent. But slavery is a dirty business. So we know that you can be colonized by a group of European people and then you in your in your ability to assimilate to that you can then enslave another group of people right so the victim can also do the atrocity thing too to the next group of people right but then babies come out of that right because when men and women come together no matter whether you're in bondage or not some babies are going to come through <laughs> That is no secret, whatever. We're going. All right? Bye. Right. <laughs> right. Right. We give too much credit to things outside of us mm -hmm. when we're always doing that thing. Black men have always been fighting, always been freedom seeking people all the time. But in this system that's set up, you're not supposed to do that. So when they start fighting to protect their community and their women and their children like they have always done but they're they're attacked to, to the degree that is unimaginable like thousands of white men coming to Tulsa city to uh, participate in this behavior and the street the first street that they come across to do that is this street right here Elgin you see Greenwood consists of 40 square blocks in the district right we're thinking about just one street but the district where the African American community were held under legal segregation is 40 blocks. The southern boundary is the railroad tracks. The western boundary is this street, Detroit, which converted into a street called Cincinnati, right? The eastern boundary is Lansing. The northern boundary is Pine, or one block, a couple of blocks up to Queen. That's how big of an area that was attacked, right? That's why you put airplanes in the sky. Because you have over 23 churches in the area of that space. You don't have commerce on just one of the streets. You have commerce over here on this street. Right? You have commerce over here on this street. You have commerce all down that boundary line right here because that's the railroad track. So what does competition have to do with that? Because under legal segregation, when you have no rights, how are you jealous of me and I have no rights? What kind of business is that? It's evil. Right? It's evil. It's evil. So who's teaching this this regular white man to be jealous of people who have no rights under legal terms? Look at it like that. And so why are we continually holding that power structure up there to what kind of foolishness are you teaching people? Because you know what? That man on top of how ability was holding his shoes, he needed a job. And when, when men try to get together and form a union like the men did in Elaine, Arkansas, and they're just shot outright because they said, wait a minute, we can actually earn a profit on our time. We can pay back the store and we can earn, earn a profit and we don't have to be in debt. So we're just going to raise the price and get to market. But I'm not supposed to be able to raise the price and get to market when I pick the price. I can't get the yield that I need to get. I can figure that out. But then I'm not supposed to do that. If you do, you're a killer. That's what happened in New York. What happened here? These men were successful, yes. As successful as you can be under an oppressive system. You weren't as successful as successful as you actually could be, right? But you're under an oppressive system. So how much success can you really attain ever under that type of system? Because it's regurgitated and it's reimagined over and over and over again, right? So that man on top of hostility with all those guns, he's hostile at the black man who has no rights. Mm -hmm. When that black man gave him a job, 
when he used to work in that black man's field because black people had land because of Indian removal and being with the tribe and the tribe fighting on the south side and then being punished by the United States government because the South lost and the, and the United States government consistently wanted to break up the tribe's sovereignty because holding land in communal in the, in the communal setting builds you up to be a nation of too many people. And so I need to break up that sovereignty. And how do I do that? I can separate you and give your daughter over here 40 acres. And you over here get 160 acres. And if your wife is in, then she can get 160 acres. And so on and so forth in your family, but y'all don't have land in common anymore. And then you're gonna start being able to sell your land because the white man can then come in. Once I break that open, the white man can then come in and offer you so much for your land. And you're like, okay, sure. You don't really understand the complexities of, of land ownership because that's not how you that's not how you did the thing, right? You tell land in, in community, mm -hmm. with community. So everybody gets kind of taken care of, right? But then that other thing comes in there and says, no, we need to separate this out because we're going to break this up, right? They weren't able to break up the sovereignty of the nation, though, because that was too strong. But they did break up the land. Mm -hmm. And that's how you get white settlement into Indian territory. And that's how you get families pitted against each other. If you put something in there that can put a divider between you, the tone of your skin, the texture of your hair. Oh, do you speak proper English? Do you know this? Do you know that? Oh, I'm not going to teach you everything. Right? So that man on top of hostility, he never gets his station in life, never changes. He's always the poor white man that's held accountable for the lynchings and everything. But who's telling him this? Because he don't have any more rights than a black man has. He just has white skin that tricks him into thinking that someday he can be up there in the big tower when they're laughing at him all the time. Because he's not educated. Some of his kids are just now going to college. You already put your kids in college. A couple of generations ago. He didn't do that. Because they're held in perpetuity like that. And that was the system created for them to say the notion. So when we get up here and we get to burning and looting and and um, and the stealing of people's property, because when they put home, when they set homes on fires and businesses and churches, they stole out of them. Yeah, and yeah. So they removed the men from the community and turned them in separate locations, and then the women would be next. But we don't understand what happened to those women left alone in the community sometimes. Because we can't, you know, we can't handle all the complexities of violence that's perpetrated against us, right? And so then the women are taken. Babies are born in some of these places that the men are held. Babies are born in there. Right. So when the men are able to get out, finally, they let them out with a green card that says a, a white man has signed to get them out of there. Right, and they have to wear a little ribbon that says under police protection. And they're able, the men get out and they have to clean up. Some of them have to clean up. Right. B.C. Franklin is one of those men that were held in one of those places, Dr. Franklin's father, an attorney. Right. Brilliant attorney. Immediately, he sets up shop on Greenwood, in his, where his office was burned down. And he begins to uh, get start filing paperwork so the communities can get their land. The, the men begin to meet immediately and say, no, we need to organize because this is about a land grab. They knew that instantly. The city instantly passes an ordinance that says you can't rebuild unless you rebuild with fire retardant materials. Right. B.C. Franklin and two other attorneys, Spears and Chappelle, sued the city of Tulsa in 1921. Right. So if black men are so afraid of white men because of this violence, how did B.C. Franklin and those two other attorneys walk in the courthouse full of KKK, sue the city of Tulsa, and win, and the community rebuild? What you don't know about the history of your brilliance is the thing that hurts us the most, right? Because the behavior we should be modeling is B.C. Franklin and those other men of uh, the deacons of the church, those masons of the church, who were rebuilt, reconstituting, reconstructing what you thought you could destroy because you only destroyed buildings and homes. And yes, some people died, 
but the community is still here today, right? So the community rebuilds. And then under a ribbon of reconciliation, which reconciliation is a cuss word, right? Because it looks like reconciliation means that we're supposed to now be together. A reconciliation is a process. It's not the destination. It's a, we have to grapple with this, and everything has to come up. Yeah. We're thinking that the truth somehow, because we don't say it, it's not a part of reconciliation. No, you're hurt. The person that hurts you, they have to come forward. All the people that caused this, they have not come forward yet. The families of power have not come forward yet. We don't have their faces. We don't have them telling the story. It's always us trying to tell the story and explain their behavior. I can't explain their behavior I'm not them. They have to do that. I can only tell what the impact of that behavior has been on people that look like me. So I grapple. We grapple with that. That's reconciliation. It's a process. It's not the destination. Right? But because we're on top of all this history right here, we're on top of all this, right? We're on top of all this in our family. Right? Do we know all of our family history? Have we have we dealt with all of our family history? Then do we know our city history? Then do we know our neighbors' family history? Do we know the city's history? And do we know the state's history? And then do we know the body of land that we're on? Do we know that history? Most of the time we don't. We just come and we, because America has been totally colonized, we totally look through the lens of uh, a European perspective at ourselves and don't realize how harmful and painful and hurtful that is and how much that actually keeps us from being in community with each other. If we can get on top of that ribbon, because we're here, right? This isn't going to go away. We're on top of all this. This isn't going away. But if we can get on top of that ribbon, then we do what we always do. It's just a Negro Women's Association banner motto is lifting as we climb. We don't grow down, we grow up. These 10 panels here speak to this tower. The community of people who were at the table and had something to do with the building of this, only a few of them are still left. It was survivors. It was descendants of survivors. It was the Jewish community. It was mixed race people. They were at the table. Those who can be at the table at certain times, magnificent that they were at the table. Those people who come along, they left something for you to have to hold on to. Right? That's all we're doing is leaving something for the next generation to, to grasp onto and be able to move on, lifting as we come. The eternal verities shall prevail. That's the truth. That's what we do when we come to places like this, when we engage with each other in civil discourse. Not in, you know, we're not bantering because we're passionate. We know who we are. And we love who we are. And something else is trying to tell us that we're not who we think we are. No, we know who we are. We don't think, we know, right? And so the challenge is for us to continue to be together despite that. Because these little children, they deserve to know that they are better than what happened to them. They're better than what people that look like them did. And they can be in community, they can be with community, and it's all right. We're no different than the trees and the grass and the flowers. That's right. All in the same boat. Right. Growing up the same way. We're all in the same human skeletal body. The same exact way. No difference. We're the only thing that's struggling. Human beings. We can drop this story anywhere in the globe. Because it's still happening today. Right? Lifting as we climb. That's what we do when we choose to be in the setting. Well, we're not in strife and struggle, but we are building community every single time. That's what this park is for. That's why it was good. Well, thank, thank you. you. Thank you for that welcome thank and thank you for you all of that history. We are going to, man, I mean, that just, yeah, that was, that was, that was, man. No, I, I'm awfully full. Awesome. I'm awesome. I'm awesome. I'm awesome. I'm awesome. <laughs> I appreciate you. I don't want y'all to be holding your head down. No, 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 in a good way. Like, wow. yeah, yeah, no, you, you be up. We needed this. Yeah. We needed this. Yeah. You be up. Yeah. You are right. We needed this. <laughs>
That's all you. You got it. That's you. Okay. Uh, you got it. Thank you.